Hey everyone, uh, back again in Logic. Um, I'm actually doing this off the back of the last video, hence the same clothes. I do own more than one hoodie. I own two. Um, so anyone that's watched my stuff before uh, will know that my preferred method of inputting drums is to do them live on my MIDI controller. Excuse the wonky camera angle, uh, but normally I would just play everything in uh, live. which is fine for most things, um, but I was finding that I was spending a lot of time, particularly on more sort of complicated, tricky rhythms, just recording over and over again, record, delete, record, delete, or you know, going in and fixing notes and uh, not being able to access the velocities that I want all the time, especially because my controller isn't the best. Uh, so step input is something that you know would be really useful in solving that, but I couldn't immediately figure out how to use it in Logic. So that's what I'm gonna share with you today, as well as something really interesting you can do when combining step input with the pattern region, uh, which is another really cool thing about Logic that I am quite excited about. So I'm going to start by making my MIDI region. We'll just drag this out to five bars. Uh, now in the edit view, press E, you have these two buttons here, MIDI in, MIDI out. Now MIDI out just relates to whether or not you can hear uh, notes when you click them or select them. So if I turn that off, obviously nothing's going to happen. Now if I press MIDI in and then just start playing notes, I can obviously input those in. Now, what I couldn't figure out was how I insert a rest. Intuitively, I want to be able to press the right arrow key. Didn't do anything. Left arrow key doesn't move the playhead. It just goes through the notes. Space just stops and starts the transport. So what you have to do is you have to open up the step input keyboard uh, on the screen, which I initially breezed right past because I thought, well, I don't want to use this. I want to use my controller, but you have to have this open. Uh, in order to do things like move the playhead backwards and forth, as well as change the division of notes that you're using as well. So the way you would do this is just position your playhead where you want to start recording. And what I'm going to do is basically count 16. So I'm always playing something, either a drum hit, or I'm advancing the playhead with the space bar or the right arrow key. I'll go back to the beginning. I'm going to put some pedal hats. And back to the beginning and do symbols. So one kind of oddity that you'll notice there is that the um, stop start function of the space bar doesn't work while this is open and it can kind of glitch things out a bit. So when you want control uh, over your transport back, just make sure that that's closed and you can stop start. So you can see right away that that's really useful for doing things like layering over that three, four on top of the four, four. And I was able to get real fine control over the velocities that I wanted like on those uh, leading kick drums. Uh, another thing that this would be good for is just doing things like drum fills. So again, I'll activate MIDI in, open up the on-screen keyboard, option command K, and then we'll just do a kind of basic drum fill. So again, to do that kind of thing at speed, you know, it might be difficult to get the velocities how I want them. I might play it wrong a few times, and then you just end up spending a lot of time going in and, you know, editing things rather than just using step input and getting it right first time. So another thing you can do with this panel is change the note duration. So I've been doing everything in 16th notes, um, but you've got whole notes all the way up to 64ths. And you can actually change this with the numbers on the top of your keyboard. Uh, you can also access things like dotted time and triplet time. Um, you have to make sure that this panel is active and focused. If you start pressing numbers with the application focused instead, you see it's gonna do weird things. Uh, so just make sure that this thing is active before you start pressing numbers. So using those, I can alternate between 16th and 32nd notes.
And then if I go across to here and we'll hit nine, and then we can input some 16th triplet notes. So pretty cool. Now where it gets really interesting is if you combine step input with pattern regions and pattern regions are really cool. Um, I initially started using these just for electronic drum production because you could do some like ratcheting effects, like uh, triggering the same step like two, four, six, eight times, uh, which is really good for things like trap hats and stuff. Um, but this view is also really useful for acoustic drum programming. So what I'll do is set this to something a bit longer. So we'll try 32 steps. You can go all the way up to 64. And I'm going to start by deleting the preset lanes. And if I go across to this plus symbol here and press learn, I can add all of the kit pieces that I want to be able to uh, program. So we'll do a kick. I'm going to do two snares because I want to have one to be a ghost note channel and one to be a hard hit. And let's do a pedal hat, crash, and a ride. And I'm going to go ahead and delete that C2 because that was left over from before. Okay. So again, I'm going to activate the uh, step input. I'll use option command K to bring up the step input keyboard because you still need to be able to advance uh, or rewind the playhead. And I'm also going to turn MIDI out off because what you'll find with that is that as I advance through steps, I'm going to hear the drum every time I move the playhead, which I don't want. So if I turn that off, then it's silent. So what we can do in the uh, pattern region is some really interesting stuff where different kit pieces have different loop lengths. So I'm going to start by just putting in a kick pattern that's kind of interesting, and we're going to make it an odd length and then kind of set that against uh, some other different length loops as well. So I can go across to this secondary tab here. So uh, this button basically lets you trigger steps on and off. And then this one lets you choose different things like the gate length, uh, the note that it's being played. And then we've also got this one here called loop. And then I'm just going to drag this in. So we have a kind of like odd length pattern. And the cool thing about that is that no matter how long I make this pattern clip, that phrase is going to kind of roll over on its own timing until it reaches the beginning of the next pattern clip, um, which basically means you don't need to go through and replicate that kick phrase or that kick pattern. It's just going to kind of loop doing its own thing. So then we can go ahead to the uh, pedal hat. And what I could even do there is just make that a shorter loop because it's just going to run those same four hits. Now, if you remember, I made two um, snare channels, one for a ghost note and one for a main hit. So I'm going to uh, program in a pattern using those two alternating hit types. Uh, and then I'll show you something you can do using probability uh, or chance. And the last thing we'll do, we'll just put in like a little symbol uh, and ride phrase. So on uh, this ghost note channel, the D1, if I expand this down to reveal more lanes, and you see we have velocity, gate, tie. So if I wanted to, I could go in and sort of change the you know loudness of these hits. If I press plus down here, or if I click on tie, I can change this to a different parameter. And I'm going to set this to chance. And what we'll do is just on either of these arrows, I can click and drag downwards to set the probability across all of those steps that they're actually going to happen. So if we set these ghost notes somewhere around 50 to 60%, check out what happens when I play the pattern clip. In 
increase it a bit. So in this way, you get like a really nice kind of almost like living organic performance uh, where it's never going to be the same twice. So if I was to drag this out, you know, all the way up to 32 bars, that pattern of ghost notes is basically going to be different every time. Um, if I then want to commit that to MIDI, I can right click and then choose convert to MIDI regions. And then if we go in here, you're going to see that we've got that nice kind of randomized, humanized pattern uh, of ghost notes and everything else. And the kick pattern is going to loop properly and everything as well. Now, one thing I noticed there, and you probably noticed it as well, uh, is that that crash is happening a bit too often. So what I'm actually going to do is just undo all of this. Uh, we'll drag this back in. Doesn't need to be quite that long. Um, and what you can do is on the crash channel, which is, I believe, the C sharp two, you can actually change the playback rate. So if we set that to something like quarter note instead of sixteenths, and then check out how the playhead moves uh, just for that note for the C sharp two. So now we've only got that crash happening once every eight bars. There's also some cool stuff we could do with those ghost notes. So um, I kind of mentioned earlier that you can do that ratcheting effect, which is usually used for things like trap hats in hip hop. Um, but if you do it on these ghost notes, so on the D1, uh, we can make this last one actually play two notes. So check out what happens when we get to that last ghost note. And there's a bunch of other stuff that you can do in this view. Um, you might have noticed that you have these direction arrows here, and this decides the way the playhead moves within that row. So by default, it's going to go from left to right, but you can change this from right to left or backwards, or it can ping pong, just go endlessly from end to end. And that could also make for some really interesting kind of uh, polymetric patterns. So yeah, pattern regions, really, really cool. I think it's possible to do some stuff with these that would take you a long time to do uh, either inputting live on a keyboard or mousing everything in by hand. It can certainly get you a, you know, a lot of the way to where you want to be. And then you can obviously right click, convert to a MIDI region, and then, you know, kind of make your own changes from there. So yeah, let me know down in the comments below what you think of this. Um, if there's anything that I missed or any cool tricks that you might know about the pattern regions. Uh, I know you can use this for other stuff as well. I've seen people use it uh, melodically. Um, not something that I've tried out myself yet, but I know it is possible. Uh, but yep, yeah, thanks again for watching and uh, I'll catch you next time.